Welcome back to the channel. If you would like a quick review of the supplies we need to reload our Savage 110 BA Stealth chambered in 338 Lapua Magnum, stick around. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome. If you would like to see the tests and tools that I use to make my group smaller, hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon to get notified when I post a new video so you can see how I and the rest of the community here improve our load development. Like I said earlier, we're going to go over the supplies we needed to add 338 Lapua Magnum to the list of calibers that we can reload here on the channel. I will try and break things down a little bit for what I had to have, the things I felt were important to have, and the things that I just bought anyway. Please keep in mind that since we've already been reloading other calibers, that this is an abbreviated list. Obviously, we already have a press, prime equipment, and other things that we've been using here on the channel. So guys, to dig right into it, let's talk about brass. To start off at the beginning, unless we're starting off with factory ammo and intend to reload those cases, which in this case we are not, we need to buy brass. After searching around various corners of the internet for this caliber, we're going straight to Lapua. This is not to say this expense is a requirement, but this is their cartridge and some other manufacturers have various reports, of course this is simply rumor and speculation, that the brass might not be as good or as reloader friendly. Factory ammo just didn't seem to make sense since it's so expensive. Factory rounds for this caliber can usually vary anywhere between $250 and all the way to $6 per round. So we're just going to start ourselves and possibly evaluate factory ammo down the line depending on exactly how things go. We should be able to reload these upwards of 10 to 12 times before they become worn out. So even though the brass is expensive, spreading it over that many reloads, it does seem like a more prudent expense to spend a little of our hard-earned reloading funds here. Moving right along with our discussion, let's talk about dies. We really can't do much to our brass without a good set of dies. For this project, we are going straight to the Forester bench rest set. This should be an excellent set of dies. I have sets in 6.5 Creedmoor and 300 Blackout. They have given me more consistent results than others that I have tried, so we're going to start off with hopefully a great set of dies and not end up evaluating five different sets like we ended up when we started out our 6.5 Creedmoor series. Of note guys, this set does not come with a micrometer seating die, but rumors I've seen on the internet do indicate that if you have a different caliber die, which I do, which already has a micrometer seating attachment, that we'll be able to swap some of the parts and actually move that micrometer function to this die if we wanted to move it back and forth. We will be testing it down the road to see what happens, but probably not with our first fire forming reloads. But don't worry guys, we will try and address it. So guys, let's talk about powder. To start out with, we need to buy appropriate burn rate powders. I do have some powders on the shelf that we might try out. Doing a little investigation of load data, if we're looking for higher velocity potential, we're going to be looking to Hodgkin H1000, Alliant Reloader 33, and I will probably be picking up some Rotumbo. Full disclosure, I already did have some H1000, simply because I had been working on a little bit of 300 Win Mag, but had I not been doing that, I certainly would have had to buy it. Ordinarily, buying a pound of powder might yield enough to get a little idea of what particular powder might work well or not, but in this particular cartridge, guys, one pound is not even going to be enough to get our 100 pieces of brass fire formed. Typical charges, depending on the powder that is being used, can range anywhere in the ballpark of 85 to 100 grains for this cartridge, so we will be using a lot of powder. I could use some of my stock H4350, however, do some quick math and the difficulty of finding it on the shelf, and I'm probably going to be saving that for my 6.5 Creedmoor, but who knows, we may give it a try. Moving right along to primers, we're only going to dedicate about 10 seconds to primers. I had some already from other testing that I have done, so we are going to start here. But since this is a Magnum cartridge, I plan to stick strictly with Magnum primers for this testing. To seat the primers for these cases, I will be using my Frankfurt Arsenal hand primer, because it, it already did come with the correct shell holder. So guys, moving right along, let's talk about projectiles. When picking out projectiles for this project, it is very important to know the twist rate of our barrel. The twist rate on the barrel for our test platform is one twist in 9.3 inches. That being said, we should be able to handle almost anything that this particular caliber has to offer. To start out with, the projectiles we're going to use are somewhat what I feel are the usual suspects. Obviously, the 300 grain Sierra Match King, the 285 grain ELD Match, and the 230 grain ELD X. However, to break in our barrel and fire form our brass, we're going to go for economy. A lot of the projectiles for this particular caliber actually come in 50 count boxes, but the 225 grain SSTs by Hornady come to 100, can be had for less than $40 a box, so probably the first 100 rounds for this barrel are going to be those. Moving on to some simpler items, we had to buy an ammo box. The ammo boxes I had on hand were not big enough to hold the 338 Lapua Magnum. So, I picked up an MTM Extra Large Ammo Box, and I think that's going to do the trick. Of note, guys, if you do pay the money for the poor brass, 
The box is theoretically usable to be a 50 round case holder. Though, however, when the case is actually loaded, I'm not sure how easy it will be to get those in and out of the box, but we'll see. Personally, I think the MTM box is going to be a better long-term solution. Now, moving right along, some of the things that may be more specific to me. As you can see, I have a Forrester Press. If you're familiar with the Forrester Press, you're going to know that it does not use traditional shell holders. Instead, it uses jaws. However, for this particular cartridge, we actually had to buy the LS series of jaws, which has a small and a much larger, which is the one we needed, set of jaws to hold this particular case head. Not really a big deal, but another $20 expenditure that goes towards reloading this caliber. Also of note, guys, I also bought the insert for my amp annealer. If you guys are familiar with the channel, you know that I have an amp induction annealer. I really like it. I have good luck with it. And since I made the investment, it only made sense to spend the extra $20 to get the correct insert so I can anneal these anytime I want. But by all means, guys, if you use something else to anneal or you don't anneal at all, by all means, you can skip this one. One more thing we bought for this effort is mandrels of the appropriate size for my Sinclair mandrel die. I haven't really made a video on this yet, but I probably will. But the short story is here that they come in two different sizes, the expander mandrel, which is one thousandths under, and the turning mandrel, that is two thousandths under caliber dimension. There is a secret third option that is the carbide turning mandrel that will certainly last a lot longer and still may require less lubrication. That is still available in the two thousandths under size only. When I got this brass, it did actually have some dinged up case necks, which for my experience with Lapua cases is actually unusual. So for this situation, especially I really prefer to use the mandrel to get those necks back in shape so I don't risk damaging any of the brass and losing any of these very expensive cases. If you guys just want to use the expander that comes with a die, that is certainly your choice. But I like to keep my options open, and I feel comfortable saying this is an optional thing, but some others may actually feel differently. Now, for trimming these cases, I do have a universal trimmer. However, I did pick up one of the case length gauge and shell holders from Lee. This was a little bit difficult to find, and in fact, Midway was actually the only place that I found that had it in stock, and that's where I ordered it from. So, at least to start with, we're going to give this a whirl. Some other miscellaneous things that we bought are simply accessories to add to my cleaning supplies for this specific caliber. I probably won't detail how I clean or specifically break in our new test platform. Everyone has to decide the correct way for them. I'm not starting any arguments over this subject. And not specifically related to reloading, I also have acquired, over the Black Friday sale season here, a new scope. Actually, two, as you can see. Going with the budget theme, if we can call it that at this point, I've heard lots of good things about these fixed offerings from SWFA. And I was actually able to get these scopes for $259 each, with rings and the bubble level included. This is an absolute amazing deal if they work half as well as people seem to say they do. The everyday price on these is $2.99 and they usually do not come with rings or a level at all. So guys, what do you think? Did I leave anything out? If so, please let me know in the comments section below. And if you have any specific advice on loading 338 Lapua, I would love to hear that too. A big thanks to my subscribers that are always helping me figure out some loads with quick load or sharing some of the load test data with me or giving some idea of different places to start. This is certainly some new territory for the channel, and I hope you all enjoy it. For those of you that are hoping for more 6.5 Creamore content, that is coming too. I have a whole bunch of data that I need to get put together, and then I'll be having more videos on that subject as well. Guys, if you're here for the 6.5 Creedmoor content, and you're not subscribed to Johnny's Reloading Bench, you really should be. He just got a new rifle in 6.5 Creedmoor, and I'm sure he's going to be posting more of his load development in that area that you guys are going to want to see. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching, liking, and commenting on all the videos. Until next week, stay safe in small groups.